Pokemon Go is the only game that exists where your physical location is the biggest part of your in-game strategy. Spawns, Pokestops, gyms, all depend on where you are. Which brings us to the question, where's the best place to play? If location is everything, knowing the best places in your local area or the world is really important. So today we check out the seven best places to play Pokemon Go worldwide. Starting with the birthplace of Pokemon Go and one of my favorite places to play, San Francisco. Notice how I said birthplace. This is important. The company that developed Pokemon Go, Niantic, is currently based in San Francisco. And because of this, the city has some pretty cool perks. There have been several new features over the years that have been exclusively released in San Francisco first so that players in the city, and Niantic obviously, could test it. And although this is cool, it is not what makes the city so great to play in. San Francisco is one of the most historic cities in the entire US, and therefore has a ton of POIs that have become Pokestops, gyms, and spawn points. Also, there's parks like everywhere throughout the city, which means tons of places to play Pokemon Go and tons of different nests. There are typically somewhere like 20 different nests at any given time throughout the city of San Francisco, which is just insane for one and gives a ton of variety to hunt. And there's a ton of variety to play. You've got cities, parks, the coast, all with different spawns. It's a super diverse city in terms of gameplay and jam packed with Pokestops, and spawns, making it California's best city to play Pokemon Go in and one of the best in the entire country. A recent video from the world's number one player, Brandon Tan, showed off one of the best in-game locations I think I have ever seen. Welcome to the Gangnam area in South Korea, home to an insane amount of Pokestops and over 70 gyms. Yeah, 70. There's two reasons why. For starters, Seoul is obviously a major city and most major cities are just good to play Pokemon Go in. But the one special part about this specific area is that there's sponsored gyms literally everywhere. And players are completely not in control of this, which makes places like this so far and few between. Even when asked about his own hometown, Brandon Tan says it doesn't even compare to this location. I saw it for my very own eyes, the gyms here. Very unbelievable. So it's the same in Singapore, right, you said? Yeah. No, here is more. What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, it's Singapore maximum is like 56 at one spot here. It's like more than 60, so... Okay, well, I'll see you in November, right? Come to Korea, come to Korea. Yeah, okay. Singapore now has only like 20 plus gyms at one spot, the max. Not to mention the community out there just seems wonderful and super active. Which makes walking around and playing in a city like this just that much more exciting. The most famous place, probably worldwide for Pokemon Go, is none other than the one and only New York City. If you've ever visited NYC and played Pokemon Go there, you'll know why. It's literally insane. And I'm not even talking about Central Park. Just walking around anywhere in Manhattan is 10 times better than most places. New York City has thousands of Pokestops and hundreds of gyms. It's quite literally one of the most consistently dense places for Pokemon Go. And actually a fun fact, the first person to ever complete their generation one Pokedex back in 2016, lived in New York City. And also in the iconic Pokemon Go launch trailer, Times Square took the spotlight with Mewtwo appearing in the sky and all the trainers in the area throwing their Pokeballs out to battle it. This scene was like one of the most exciting things ever. I had to go to New York after I saw that. Not to mention New York has its own regional Pokemon, Bufalant, which gives Pokedex completionists a necessary reason to visit the city. And when looking back on most of the insane Pokemon Go mob videos from 2016, they're mainly from New York City. And to this day, there's still so many people who play the game in the city. Raids fill up consistently and quickly all throughout Manhattan. One of my favorite cities to play in, hands down. But it's definitely not the best city to play in. That trophy belongs to somewhere else. Tokyo, Japan. Now this honestly makes a lot of sense because Japan is the original birthplace of Pokemon. And although the entire city of Tokyo is just absurd in game, there's one specific place where the world's top players like to hang out at. Welcome to Kinshicho Station, one of the world's best grind spots. This incredible place has nine Pokestops and two gyms directly on top of it. And because it's frequented by some of Pokemon Go's highest level trainers, it's typically lured up and super active. And the best part about this place, it's in a train station full of restaurants and cafes. Unlike most grind spots that are outside, this one's inside, which means no matter the weather, you can always go in there and play. And there's plenty of places to actually sit down for food or coffee while grinding. And actually last time I was there, I ended up catching two just incredible Pokemon with some very familiar faces. Next, we travel to my home, my territory, the headquarters of Team Mystic, the Santa Monica Pier. This is probably the world's most 
iconic place for Pokemon Go. Sort of because anyone who's ever played Grand Theft Auto has like virtually been here. So everyone kind of like already knows what this place is. But for Pokemon Go specifically, it has been one of the craziest places ever. Nearly all of the top moments of my channel have been at the Santa Monica Pier. Like the day one Typhlosion. Brandon, Brandon, what? Oh my gosh, where is that? We're going, we're running, we're running. We're about to jaywalk this, bro, it's worth it. If I get hit by a car, it's okay, it's on camera. But we got the Typhlosion right here. Yo, look how, look how juicy he is. Freaking Typhlosion right now, bro. The double Dragonite. Found it. Yeah, I found it. Okay, so now we're running because <laughs> we just left the first Dragonite and now a second spawn. Oh my God, there it is. The wild shiny 98 Tangela. Check this out, opening up Pokemon Go. Look at it, yes! Shiny Tangler, yes. Yes, 1785. And infinitely more memories. I literally moved to Los Angeles after I graduated high school so that I could be close to the Santa Monica Pier so I could record better Pokemon Go videos. And six years later, I still go there and play. Okay, but what makes it so good? For starters, there's just a ton of gyms and Pokestops making the area super playable. But for some reason, the spawns are unnaturally good and what made this place such a hot spot. Back in the day, there would be consistent rare spawns like Dragonite, Aerodactyl, Blastoise, Lapras. People would drive hours just to come play at the pier and hopefully experience one of these like iconic rare spawn moments. Actually, other YouTubers flew literally from across the world to go play there. Some of the biggest names in gaming have videos playing Pokemon Go on the Santa Monica Pier. And it's also a spoof for heaven, even to this day. Raids there fill up in seconds. Plus, it's the California coast, baby. Just a vibey place to play. Another recent video from the world's number one player, Brandon Ton, showed off one of the most insane places. I just, this, this is nuts. You gotta see this. Watch this clip from his video. <laughs> It's insane. I, li I literally can't even count how many gyms there are there. Like, I can't even. It is absurd. And the Pokestops go crazy too. There's a cluster of like 20 stops all right next to each other a block away from the gym cluster. Like, you literally have everything you need to become a top player within a two block radius. I would say if I went to school there, I would probably flunk out. This is at a university campus, by the way, in South Korea. There's just, there's simply no way I can just stay focused. <laughs> while there's that much going on in game. Dude, like imagine what a community day looks like there or a global go fest. Literally just pull up a chair and umbrella, grab some food and freaking catch everything. Quite literally a dream location in Pokemon Go. And I'm pretty sure it's player made. Now historically, university campuses are some of the best places to play Pokemon Go. But this one is obviously much different. And again, I think there's a reason behind that. I think it's because the players and local community here have put in a load of extra effort submitting points of interest to make more Pokestops and more gyms. And good for them, honestly. Super jealous. And I'm jealous of one more place, Hawaii. Now, as far as gameplay is concerned, Hawaii is not as insane as some of the other places we've shown off today, but it's still pretty freaking good, especially for an island. Specifically in Honolulu, Pokemon Go is actually wildly fire. Wildly fire, wild, it's good. There's the main strip and the shopping district that is loaded with Pokestops and plenty of gyms in the area to hit some raids on. This place is actually also home to one of my favorite memories I've ever had on my channel, the Double Shiny Lugia. And the best part about Pokemon Go in Honolulu is Honolulu. Many beautiful vacation destinations just lack good in-game gameplay. Now, obviously you're on vacation, so like, you know, put the phone down and enjoy, but some of us are addicted, okay? It's not our fault. Honolulu, along with being just an absolutely beautiful vacation destination, is also a super good place to play Pokemon Go. It's a best of both worlds kind of vibe. And those are the seven best places in the world to play Pokemon Go. If you've been to any of these places, let me know in the comments and check out the other videos on screen because they're epic as well. Take care.